My guest today is internationally renowned storyteller Michael Parent, who also happens to be a distant cousin of mine and a wicked good eater. Please welcome <laughs> Michael Parent. Get out here, Michael. Oh, stop it, stop it, dear. Stop it, dear. <laughs> I just go. Oh, like that? Oh. Oh, mm. that's the French way. Oh, right. no, no, no. Okay, so I go around this way? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I made you some tato soup. Ooh, la la. That's maple sugar pie for the uninitiated. It's French Canadian mm. thing. It's mm. my grandmother's recipe. So can we eat it now? Yeah, actually, oh. I just Googled it. It's not really my grandmother's recipe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there good. are so many things you should ask people on their deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, how are you? Dia. I'm doing good, Dia. We both want to take a bite, but there we go. Uh, 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 I know, it's so good. Yeah. Um, so tell me about it. You're, you're born in Lewiston, right? Yes, yes. I, I have to admit to that. <laughs> yeah? And you grew up speaking French and English? Well, mostly because my grandparents spoke French and they didn't speak much English. So in order to communicate with them, I had to speak French. So how did you know when were you were going to speak French, when you're going to speak English? It was considered um, it was considered a bad form or impolite ah. to speak to your grandparents in any language other than French, ah. because they could get by in, in English, but they couldn't. They they really liked it when you spoke to them in yeah. French. Yeah. So it's a sign of respect. Yes. Yes. I guess you could say that. Yeah. 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 And you played hockey. Oh, geez, and crow, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. Uh, well, I had a, a rather spotty hockey career. Yeah? Yeah. I kept getting injured. Oh, because you're yeah. a goalie, right? I was a goalie, and I kept getting... You know, the puck will always find a place where you're not protected. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, pucks, pucks have a little... Uh, there's a little sensor inside them. <laughs> and uh, Oh, you didn't know this, huh? Well, it's true. Uh, there's a little sensor inside them, and they, they zoom in on a spot that's unprotected. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know much about hockey, really. You don't? No, but you've had a lifelong li love affair with hockey. I have, I have. And Still playing now, right? In the well, Old Fats Hockey League. Yes, in the Old Fats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wish you hadn't mentioned the name, but... Uh, <laughs> it's okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I play twice a week when I haven't thrown my back out or... Yeah, done something else like that. Michael said that he threw his back out sneezing. Sneezing. I have been there, done that. <laughs> that that's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to yeah. admit that. Yeah, the other day I saw Charlie. He was getting ready to sneeze. And he was kind of projecting his back. That's when you know you're old. What? Right? Yeah, I think that, 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 that's one of the signs, yeah. And, and so uh, you're supposed to bend your knees when you sneeze. <laughs> Did you know this, that you're supposed to bend your knees when you sneeze? Uh, anyway... I had bent my knees, and I was, uh, I usually sneeze about six, seven times in a row. <laughs> and I was up to no, about number four, <laughs> and I felt, ugh. Oh, so man. So I'm not playing hockey this week. That's too bad. Yeah, and I'm, I'm yeah. one of the top 200 players, I guess. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you live long enough, you'll get into the top 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll outlive them all, yeah, yeah. Now, the highlight of your high school hockey career, tell me about that. Well, my senior well, there were two. Two, okay. That come to mind right away. In my senior year, we won the New England Championship. That was, that was quite something. That must have been amazing. No one from Maine had won it in about 15 years. Yeah. But the other highlight was Gino. Your, your cousin you met, Gino? You met Gino. Yes. Yes, he oh, was. Oh, what a character. Yeah, yeah. He was one of these people that didn't need to think out of the box because he basically was. he'd never been in the box. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, so uh, he was a goalie too, uh, Gino was, and uh, he was about two years older than I, uh -huh. uh, one of nine children, yeah. and uh, he was a goalie, and he was quite erratic as a person and erratic he, as a goalie. He looks pretty erratic the yeah. last time I saw him, yeah, let me was, tell you. He was quite erratic. Yeah, he's gone to his reward now, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was, he was one of these guys, he'd smoke a cigarette, then he'd, he'd use an, his inhaler. He'd go. <laughs> <laughs> there's something so wrong about that, aren't there, you? There's something wrong with that, yeah. But anyway, he he uh, did a, a play that I have never seen 
that I had never seen before and I have never seen since, although I've been tempted to try it myself. I call it the Gino Maneuver. So uh, he was having a bad night. Yeah. And his defensemen were allowing a lot of breakaways. You know what breakaways are? When somebody comes alone on the, uh, the goalie. And uh, he had allowed uh, a number of goals. And he was sick to death of his defensemen not protecting him well enough. So at about the red line, about center ice, a guy breaks in. This is late in the game. They're losing about 14 to nothing. <laughs> and uh, in those days, uh, the, the, um, the goals were on these stanchions that were about eight inches high. They were drilled, they were screwed into the, the uh, uh, surface of the ice. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of injuries with people bumping into the, so into the stanchions. But in any case, you had to be really strong to pick that up. Well, Gino sees this kid, and he's had enough. He gets his shoulders underneath the crossbar that goes across. No kidding. Yeah, he gets his shoulder underneath, and he lifts it up <laughs> beyond the stanchions. He turns it sideways. <laughs> He slides it through between the two uh, goal posts. He slides it through, and then he puts it up against the board <laughs> so that there's no room for a puck to get in at all. So the kid who's coming down with the puck, <laughs> he's never seen this either. <laughs> and so he stops, and he looks to the referees for guidance. And so they award the kid a penalty shot. And the way I used to tell the story is that the kid scored on a penalty shot and it really didn't make much difference what Gino did. But Gino was in the audience one time when I told this story. He was really ticked off. He came up to me afterwards. He said, Mike, Mike, come on. Hey, uh, you know that kid there on a, on a, you remember how he talked, huh? He talked yeah, like that, yeah. mostly because he smoked a lot of cigarettes, you know. <laughs> and, uh, he says, you know, on the penalty shot there, I stopped that kid there. So next time you tell that story, you get it right, okay? It's that story police. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, Gino deserved to have his story told precisely. Yeah. 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 Good for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you played at the Boston Gardens when you won the... Yes, we did. That must have been thrilling, huh? It was quite thrilling. Um, the, our, our fans showed up in buses, and you could still see, if you looked, uh, you know, a goalie gets a good view of the game. Yeah. But also a good view of what goes on in the stands. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if I should tell you this, but you already know, I don't know if you people know, but in the stands there were people praying the rosary. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know actually if Jesus or Mary really cares about high school <laughs> hockey. <laughs> I, I, I tend to doubt it. I, yeah. I think they have other things on their mind. <laughs> but uh, they really, um, these people believed that they, if they said the rosary during the game, it would, it would help us to victory. Wow. And did it? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how big the rosary beads were on the other side, right? Well, see, uh, one guy who, um, who was a, a proponent of this, uh, his name was Gaston. Gaston. Gaston Beaulieu. He was very much like Gino. Yeah. Uh, one of these characters. Eccentric. Very, <laughs> very eccentric. Small yeah. towns in Maine have a lot of eccentric people. Now, you met, you met Gino, but you did not meet Gaston. I did not have the pleasure. No, Gaston was convinced that if he said the rosary during our games, and he always bet money on our games. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, so he had it, you know, he had a couple of things going at once there. Yeah. 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 And uh, he was quite convinced that uh, every save I ever made was because he was saying the rosary. <laughs> Didn't have anything to do with your skill. Nothing to do with <laughs> your skill at all, no. Just it, divine intervention. It, it was, it was uh, Mary who was making all the saves. Wow. Je vous salue, Marie-Denis. Oh, and he, he would, uh, when I mentioned to him 
that in fact it was possible that there was somebody on the other team who was doing the same thing. He said, don't worry about that, Mike. He said, don't worry about that at all. He said, you know what? There's nobody can say as many Ail Marys as me. <laughs> and he demonstrated. Well, do it for me. Can you do okay. it as quick as him? Yeah, in, in French, I can. In yeah. French. Je vous salue, Marie-Denne de Gastien. Vous vous êtes dans les yeux, vous vous bénissez, Marie-Denne de Gastien. Wow! I had to say a round of applause, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, for our folks who don't know, there's a lot of Franco Americans in Lewiston. Yes. And one of the things I like when I go there is every once in a while, and they're dying out now, I hear people speak in franglais, which uh, is a combination of French and English. And yes. I know that you can speak this quickly dying out language. Could you, uh, we just have a few seconds here before we go into your French song. Okay. So could you just uh, talk us out with a, a little uh, franglais? Okay. Uh, All right. So this lady goes into a shoe store. Yeah. And she insists upon speaking to a French-speaking clerk. And uh, when they finally rustle up one of these people, yeah. she says, Oh, hey, it's about time, huh? Je veux une paire de bottes, size nine. <laughs> so just like a combination, just well, randomly I, choosing words from the two languages, whichever well, works best. I think wh whatever comes to mind, yeah, yeah, because when two cultures come together, it's quite natural. I mean, you have uh, uh, Spanish yeah. and English that go mm -hmm. together, and Spanglish. Yeah. In California, pe people speak Span Spanglish all the time, and we think that it's an, it's an indication of, of stupidity. It's, it's not no. at all. It's not at all. Uh, it's just convenience. Yes. And people understand each other. Yeah. So when she said, je veux une paire de bottes size nine, <laughs> the guy understood exactly what she meant. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mikey, you're going to sing some French songs for us, French and English, right? Uh, yes, one of them has a bit of a translation. I'm hoping these people are in a singing mood. Oh, boy. Mikey's going to be right back, and he's going to sing some songs. Thanks oh, so much. Oh, it's so nice talking with you. Let's yeah. eat some pie. Now, let's eat some pie, huh?